Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, welcome back to Giga Texas. It's now Monday, the 12th of June, 2023, and it's a fast start to a busy week coming up this week. Now, a couple of things I wanna talk about in the intro you may find interesting. First, as you can see, right across the street from the west main entrance, they have put up a new display. They're using that trailer that has the Cybertruck graffiti. They're using the model line demonstration vehicles that they had during the shareholders day. And also they are displaying this mobile supercharger system. So I don't know if they had an event over the weekend or if they're preparing for one coming up, but it looks like they're trying to give some sort of demonstration about a large number of products that uh, Tesla can provide and they're highlighting the supercharger system. So it's very interesting to see this. Now another thing that is uh, interesting development is down on the south end. Now it's right by the south side of the stamping two where the two main doors go inside. I really couldn't see much inside, but right outside now extending further to the west are more of the footings that are being installed. And these footings have tie braces in between them. And the last time that we've seen footings of this kind, it was where they used either doubled or reinforced columns to support bridge cranes. Now on the other side of the wall inside the stamping two, there are bridge cranes. So I wonder if this might be either an extension to that into the new building or if it's just gonna be a start of another bridge crane system on this side of the building. So it's an interesting development to watch. The last area that I wanna talk about is up at the Megapack site and there's two related items. First, as you can see, the crews are working a lot on those eight trenches and the conduit inside that kind of neck down and approach where those pedestals are next to the cable trays. Just a little bit north of there, we can see that crews are starting to erect some of the steel parts that are gonna be necessary to connect the electrical over to the electrical switch yard and then to the Megapack site. And we know from the drawings and some of the previous videos that I've discussed is that this is where those connections are going to be made. So it's great to see that progress. Related to that, there's three main areas of some significant conduit installation that I wanna show. And this will help connect the main battery, uh, the main factory and also the dye shop and battery cathode plant to the electrical switch yard and the Megapack site. First, with this image, this is just north of Tesla Road near where the power lines are. We see that that conduit takes a 45 degree turn away from Tesla Road and is being connected next to this green electrical box. I think this is what is the end of the conduit that will go over and support the dye shop and the battery cathode plant. Over by the northeast corner of the casting machine structure, we see a lot more work with the conduit and the concrete vaults installing this on this uh, side of the casting machine structure along that widened berm. And this will eventually connect and then replace the conduit that connects to the temporary electrical switch yard now and it will allow the factory to draw power from the mega pack and the electrical switch yard. Also, the last major condu uh, conduit that I want to show you is right underneath the power lines near where it connects between the mega packs and over by the switch yard. And we can see that that is mostly completed, including the red concrete uh, to, to co encase that uh, conduit so that in the future, if anybody's excavating, they'll know that there's electrical conduit in that area based on the red concrete. And then nearby there, we see a lot more work on that south end of the switch yard preparing that foundation, which is getting a lot more rebar and actually some vertical structure, which might be walls around that structure. So a lot more to see today, and I hope that you enjoy the intro and the information we talked about and what we'll talk about in the video as well. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Take care. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga, Texas.
start off on the west side of Giga, Texas. It's early morning. Sun has just risen, but we have some clouds and mist in the sky. I wasn't able to get here quite early enough to be able to get good views inside the factory. So instead, we'll take a look at the activity on the west side. Now, uh, one of the things I want to show you is just how close the white stain work is to the northwest corner of the building now. This is a really good view to show you where they've ended. It's uh, kind of ironic that line where the white stain ends is pretty much the de delineation between General Assembly and the 4680 production portion of the building. So the rate that they're going... I think that they will probably have that section done in the next several days, which will be great to see, and then they'll wrap around to the north end. But this is a good view of what it looks like with all of the plastic on the windows and the crews actually rolling on that white stain on this portion of the building. So let's fly back towards the south along this side of the building at a lower altitude and take a look at some of the activity that is going on here today. We approach these two white tents we see some of the model y's uh, that have just come out of the factory getting ready to be moved over towards the east side another one just exited the factory on that temporary ramp and i believe that this end of line station is temporary but i don't know how long it's going to be here uh, they did move it here because of all of the internal reconfiguration and assembly of the production lines in the southern parts of the building uh, but clearly this is just temporary and I'll be looking to see when that changes. Now one of the interesting uh, displays that uh, I noticed today was this one here. They're using that graffiti uh, for the uh, Cybertruck trailer, the full line of the Tesla cars, and also a supercharger system that is a mobile system. And uh, I don't know, it looks like they may be doing a presentation to discuss the uh, supercharger system for some sort of uh, audience, or maybe they completed it this weekend. I don't know, but it was interesting to see. So let's uh, continue to fly towards the south along the west side of the building and take a look at some of the activity that is going on here at the temporary platform on this southwest side. Now, you can see that the truck is bringing some more of these uh, steel pipes in. We can see that trump box with that... Uh, uh, bending machine and also this sort of rounded uh, metal item on the ground and uh, as I maneuver the drone we'll be able to see that again but I'm also taking this opportunity and the lighting to give you an idea of what it looks like inside just on top of the platform and there is quite a bit of uh, activity you can see some robots uh, that have been installed and uh, that mezzanine and quite a bit of other items so this third floor is uh, going to be very important for manufacturing and i'm not sure what product but uh, it's uh, pretty neat to see that they're using that entire floor now on the bottom of the screen you can see that rounded item that kind of metal structure next to the trump box and uh, i'm going to be continuing to monitor to see that and figure out where that is going to be going inside of the factory but as I pop up onto the roof here, you can see these enclosures that'll be part of the vent system that they are installing. And as we fly over the roof section here, there's at least two or three uh, sections where the crews, as I showed you in my previous video, have removed some of the weatherproof membrane. And it looks like now they've installed those vent bases with some plastic covering it. Uh, and then those enclosures will be going on top of that. Uh, when they are finished. So something I'll continue to monitor. Since we're here on the southwest corner, I'll bring the drone back down to show you the progress with this trench work and these tall white pipes. It looks like they have finished the installation and now they're starting to fill in the trenches. And again, this is very similar to what we saw on the uh, southeast corner of the building. Uh, with one exception, you can see there's a trench now heading off towards the east along the base of the building with more of that water pipe. And perhaps maybe it will connect into that side of the, uh, the building or maybe it will connect into some existing pipes. This is a really good view of the overall south end and its current status. 
And what most of the excavation work is up near the base of the uh, walls of the building. And then as we continue to fly here on the uh, south uh, west side, you can tell quite a bit of the CFA auger pile rebar cages have been made. They're being stored here. And there's also some of these white bags full of more of the rebar sections. And uh, we're going to fly further to the south over the cyber pond. I want to show you the current progress of the river road expansion. Um, it's pretty clear to see both lanes now and also where those uh, trench work had been done in between each of the lanes. Most of that has had the conduit installed and the trench work is being filled back in. Uh, but this is pretty good view of the two lanes that this road will have with a center median. On the right hand side underneath those small power lines we see more of the rebar has been stockpiled. We also see some large steel items, looks like beams, um, some concrete items, and also some solar panels as well. But as we continue to the east along River Road expansion, uh, we can see there's some trench work going on right here. This may be also for some of that conduit, or it looks like maybe they are preparing to tie this surface into that intersection you see across this temporary road. As I pan the drone back towards the main building, a uh, few things of note, the CFA auger cranes and drill has been stationed here for the last several days and hasn't really had any activity, but it does look like they're putting some of the machinery around that area in preparation for future drilling. As we continue back uh, towards the main uh, building and the south end, uh, another thing is just take a look at the excavation work that is going on here. You see one of those excavators up on top of this uh, dirt pile, um, and it looks like they are extending that trench along this side of the building towards the east, as we mentioned earlier. Now, where the temporary platform used to be, and you can see the gray walls, the reason why that they're gray is that they're actually not concrete. They're temporary wall panels, so I think they're just waiting to figure out what they're going to be doing with this construction. Speaking of which, the footings and the tie bars in between the footings continue to be excavated and prepared here. Clearly, you can see the CFA piles that are the reinforced concrete piles in where all of those uh, footings are going to be. And then they'll be putting those square, uh, rec uh, the square rebar cages into that section to fill up the concrete. Really couldn't get low enough to see inside stamping too. Uh, there's a few small images there, but otherwise with the cranes and some of the other activity, it just wasn't possible today. Now I mentioned the uh, rebar sections that'll be used for the footings. This is where some of them have already been pre-made. You can see them on the ground uh, kind of uh, waiting for that installation process. And then also a lot of rebar to continue to build more of those square rebar cages for the footings in the uh, near future. As we look at the southeast corner uh, of the stamping machine structure, there's uh, more equipment, some of those white painted items waiting for installation, most likely into stamping two as well, and uh, just some other activity that is going on in and around this section. So let's get ready to go up over the power lines and take a look at uh, some other areas on the east side. car staging and uh, calibration lot is very busy. A lot of the Model Ys on this south end kind of arranged with their trunks open as the crews do their final checkouts. I did notice this. It's a new structure on the south side of the helicopter pad. Uh, looks like it's, uh, I don't know, some sort of testing device or um, actually I'm not really sure. So if you happen to know what this may be, uh, let me know in the comment section. This is near uh, on the other side of the helicopter pad from that wind tunnel that we saw being used to test Cybertruck a few months ago. 
But uh, it's interesting to see that they continue to add more of the equipment and capabilities on this side of the uh, testing and calibration lot. As we fly over the trees, one of the things I want to show you is this new recycling section and how it looks today. Uh, it looks like uh, they've got a lot of pallets here. Uh, that are empty. Also a lot of the uh, rubbish bins and those red industrial compactors and also a workshop on the west side as we can uh, tell on that tall structure with the wood uh, um, walls. It looks like there's some blue items underneath that structure as well, although it's really hard to tell. As we continue to fly north to the warehouse on wheels, uh, we can see the superchargers just pass underneath the uh, drone. A lot of the trailers that are, are here that bring items for production and then are swapped out for uh, full ones so that the truck drivers can take the empty ones back. Also on the material staging, the TKS systems, uh, many of the large items that have been wrapped in plastic uh, that we can see here have already been moved inside. A few more have been delivered like this one here with the wrapping partially removed. This gives you an idea of what is underneath the uh, white wrapping. And uh, uh, I'm uh, going to be monitoring this to see if we can detect where they are moving those into the factory uh, for installation. But there's a good view of more of the materials that are being stockpiled on this side of the uh, material staging yard. I'm going to fly over these trees. I want to show you a couple of things. One, this clearing next to this large hill. This is where those industrial recyclers, those red ones that the south end that we talked about in that new recycling yard, and all this area has been cleared out. And it does look like there's some more of the recycle materials on the right hand side of the screen. So it looks like they're still partially using some of this area to break down some of the uh, containers that bring in some of the materials used for uh, installing the production lines. As we fly over this uh, structure, which is a, a food preparation uh, kitchen, we can see the geo piers have been uh, uh, arranged here. They still haven't moved much, but there has been some changes on that uh, rectangular gravel section. Looks like some of the gravel has been moved around. Uh, I don't see any of the geo piers here, um, but uh, we were talking before, maybe this was part of a road that will extend to River Road on the south. However, just looking at its orientation and where all the other structures are, I don't think that is the case. It's probably going to be some new structure at some point. Uh, we see more materials and uh, this small temporary staging, I don't know, tent with some of the plastic on the left-hand side with some more materials as well. More steel materials to the southwest of the cell test lab. And then on the north side, I wanted to give an angle view this way, looking up through this clearing, just so you can see what the progress appears with all the uh, materials and those uh, stainless steel tanks. Also of note, this hill continues to be removed. More work going on right now, as you can uh, tell. And this dirt is being redistributed across the site to other areas. And this allows this hill to be removed. And I think the ultimate goal is to have a nice graded area on this side of the battery cathode plant. Still haven't seen the windows installed in that third level of the battery cathode plant. They're still stored on the east side, so it's something I'm continuing to watch. This west side that has been widened by removing the berm on the right-hand side uh, looks like uh, it's continuing to have some work with a trench for what I believe is a water pipe, a smaller diameter blue pipe, and it's extending down to the alleyway to the south. Also, the crane has been removed from this chiller plant, so this gives a good view of how the progress is going on, especially with this zoom in on the ground level. And uh, it also looks like on the uh, south end of the uh, galvanized steel structure on the ground, we see some red pumps that have been uh, unwrapped and placed here for installation, uh, which is uh, kind of interesting to see. I'm kind of curious where those will end up. Also, the manifold for the vaporizers is still being worked on uh, in that section. 
So let's uh, proceed back to the south around the yellow crane, which uh, hasn't moved in several weeks. But uh, this will give you a good view of how the die shop looks today. And uh, looks like there hasn't been any glass or any of the doors installed. So we're still waiting for that to happen. Along this dirt path on the bottom, you can see the trench where they're putting some of the HDPE pipe in, also where they had the conduit installed, and then flying underneath the drone along this side up to where you see the conduit here. This is all of that electrical conduit that will support the die shop and the battery cathode complex of buildings. Now it has this 45 degree bend, and it looks like crews are uh, doing the final uh, portions of the conduit to attach it to this uh, green uh, electrical box. And I think that this is the termination of where the connections are made to power the battery cathode and die shop. So if this is the case, then it's great to see that they've made that progress and then those conduit connections are being made right now. As we fly over this section, we'll note that most of the stormwater pipe that was being installed in trenches has now been filled back in. This last remaining section is on the left-hand side of the screen. It's concrete, and then that beam is actually supporting a gas pipe, and they do that while they have the excavations to make sure that that pipe doesn't bend or have any damage done to it. But this entire section was trenched. We saw some of the steel corrugated pipe for the rainwater management system, and it looks like it's all filled in now. And also most of the pipes that were stored here have now been removed. Some of the progress that I want to show you at the south end of the electrical switch yard is into this deep pit. And we can uh, tell that uh, next to that retaining wall that the crews have been adding quite a lot of rebar in the bottom of that uh, slab, but also they're making walled sections as well. And all this is going to be tied together and it suggests that what we're seeing is a underground vault of some sort being constructed and uh, I don't know how tall it's going to be right now. It looks like, based on the workers, it's at least six feet tall or about a meter and a half tall. But uh, it's going to be extending this entire pit. And we'll see how it uh, is. Uh, the rebar and the walls continue to be installed. Now on the truck and the crane is moving some of the rebar for that work. So uh, quite a bit more of the work uh, is remaining for that uh, subterranean vault section. The conduit coming underneath the power lines with that red uh, concrete mix looks like they're pretty much done up to that point. And then we'll be watching to see where they connect into the switch yard, possibly through that vault that they are building uh, next to that retaining wall. All of the gravel mix has been uh, completed on the switch yard itself. It looks like just final preparations are being made. The control room looks like it has had most of the exterior uh, materials cleaned up so it's looking more like a finished structure as well and then on these poles particularly the one closest to us with those projections uh, we can see how it's going to be moving towards the mega pack site at the top of the screen and i think along this location over to that north end of the mega pack is where we're going to see some above ground wires connected and there's actually some progress being done over there as well. And I want to show you as we reposition the drone to the mega pack site. Dropping the drone down so we can get a good close view, we can see that some of the steel structure is now being installed on top of those screw type piers. And I believe that this is going to be where the main above ground connections are made here at the Megapack site. And it looks like there's going to be maybe some transformers in those square depressions that uh, have a little bit of water in them right now, but it looks like that's going to be added at some point as well. But all of this is going to be connected above ground over towards the north side of the switch yard. And uh, we'll continue to watch as they install more and more of these metallic uh, steel items on top of these uh, screw type piers. But this gives you a good idea of how that work is progressing right now today. The cable trays looks like they're in their final configuration. 
And then in and amongst there, we see some more of those screw type piers and also these eight trenches with the conduit. Each trench is going to connect to either uh, eight or 10 of the mega packs as a group and for a total of 68 mega packs. This is a good view of the electrical conduit vaults and where the 90 degree connection is made and it proceeds over to where that excavation on the south end of the switch yard is made. And in the vaults, you can actually see the holes where the conduit uh, uh, in, comes into those uh, vaults. And then those vaults will allow for a maintenance function and also to uh, install the wiring. As we fly over this graveled section on either side, those are the main parallel lines where the mega packs themselves will be installed. This is a good view of what the workshops look like here on this uh, fenced in section where they have all of the materials stockpiled as well. On the left hand side of the screen, more of those steel poles. Those are what I think are going to be installed on the north end to connect over to the electrical switch yard. And then of course the concrete pads here, these will be installed on those two long parallel lines where we saw the conduit and the frame supporting the conduit sticking up along the entire length. So let's fly over Tesla Road and take a look at some progress at the northeast corner of the casting machine structure. And we'll start here on the south end of this parking lot. Uh, the excavator is working what I think is going to be where some of that electrical conduit is uh, already in place underneath the road to this point. And uh, here the crews are working on those two concrete vaults with a lot of the conduit. And this gives you a good view of how that uh, entire uh, conduit vault section is constructed. And here more of the crews are working on trenches for conduit that will extend along this widened berm section and more of the concrete vaults have been installed as well. I'm going to try to zoom in to show you the section inside where the ground slab was removed. There's been some excavation, some rework, and uh, I, I won't catch it on the video, but just after I finish the video here, a uh, truck arrived with rebar mesh and also rebar, and I think that's for them to complete the preparations for the ground slab inside. What I'm showing you here is the rack mounts for all of the casting machines, uh, the castings that come from the casting machines inside this structure, and they look like they're pretty full here. Um, they actually do have markings and they are saying uh, Model Y front or rear castings on there. However, I still continue to watch to see if maybe some of those are going to be marked for Cybertruck and they're going to need those at some point in the near future to keep the uh, two castings or the castings for the two vehicles separated. So it's something I'll be watching for over time. As we fly along the north side of the building, um, we can see these black and yellow um, ramps that are used to unload some of the semi trucks that bring parts and components in. And earlier today, I saw some semis bringing in more of those rack mounts for the castings. And in those particular ones, they were marked Model Y. On the northwest corner of the building, this is just a, a good view with good lighting of how the uh, cooling enclosures, the vents, and this new enclosure that's sort of uh, stainless steel looking uh, appears today. And it looks like most of that work is uh, completed at least to this point in time. And then across the road, you can see the staging locations and uh, the work that is going on uh, on the far side of the highway with those uh, new clearings and uh, the other structures that will be added for what's the west support structure on that side of the highway. So otherwise, that was a good view, I think, of how Giga Texas looks on this Monday, the 12th of June, and all of the various activities that are going on around the site. And as I do a pullback, this will give you a good view of where the electrical switch yard, mega pack, the temporary switch yard, and the main building are uh, in relation to each other. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care.